Hello and welcome to Clarinet Ninja. Today we're going to do something, for lack of a better word, pretty, pretty nuanced. We're going to experiment with the position of our reed. If you've seen my reed videos, you know I take a lot of time and a lot of effort to get my reeds just right. And you might do the same thing. One of the things that we don't talk about very much is the placement of our reed. And it is obviously super important. Those are the points at which our reed is making sound. It's controlling the vibrations. So we need to make sure that we're very intentionally putting on our reed, that our reed is not broken, obviously, sure, and that everything is exactly as we intend it. Now I'm going to take pictures of where my reed is so that you can see. I've got this reed where I would normally play a reed. You'll see it, but it's when I press it down, it's just right below the tip of the mouthpiece. It's even with the sides, and I even make sure it's even here at the bottom. I make sure that my ligature is below this point here, and that's my starting place with the reed. That's where I, that's where I am putting them on when I work on them. That's where I anticipate they're going to work best. So here's, here's the test today. We've got our friend Tonal Energy on. We're going we're gonna to track the overtones to see if there's any difference in the overtones. We're going to use our ears to see if there's any difference in the sound. My guess is we're not going to get a big difference in the sound. But I want to report back on how my, it feels when I do it when we do this. So let's see what happens. This isn't going to change the world, but it might make the difference between feeling eh and feeling pretty good during a performance or a rehearsal or a practice session. So let's see. I'm going to just play the same things. So I'm going to play a pretty slow F major scale, and then I'm going to play a little bit of Vapor 2. But not much because I haven't practiced it. I will get that water out of my A key, even though it will probably make for invalid comparisons. All right, let's see how Weber sounds. Okay, less than perfect, but I'm gonna take it for today. Hopefully you will too. If you like super geeky clarinet videos, hit the subscribe button. It's open for the entire video in case you're not quite ready to commit. I don't know why you wouldn't be, but it's there. Please hit it. Smash it even. And put the bell on so you know whenever these super geeky nuanced clarinet videos come up. All right, so now I'm going to push my, my read down way further than I ever would. I'll take a picture of where it is. And again, we're moving this a matter of millimeters or less than millimeters. This should make the reed vibrate a little bit more freely. So if it's a four when it starts, it's a little bit less than a four. Now, according to, I'm using that based on where I adjust it from, and I'm calling that four, even though I'm probably taking some off, it's not really a four anymore anyway. On and on and on, let's not get in the weeds on that. But from where I normally play it, from where I adjusted it, I'm moving it down, it'll be a little less resistant in terms of how it feels, but we're going to use our friend Tonal Energy to tell us if there's any difference in the sound scientifically, but we can also use our ears.
was a little bit better. And I think that that's one of the things to learn for me. It's a good reminder for me is that, you know, I make my reads. I don't make them. I perfect my reads or adjust my reads to a certain place. I can't, I can't get married to that place in the mouthpiece because this actually feels better, a little bit lower. Not much lower, but a little bit lower. I don't know if it sounds any different. You tell me. But it feels a little bit different. And that feel is more what we're responding to when we're playing. The sound is one thing. It's important. No denying that. The feel of it is also very important. I think it sounds the same. It does. It, I can definitely tell it's lower. Uh, it's less resistant. Now, I'm going to do an experiment that I've never done before. I'm going to put it a little bit off to the side so it's got more more of the tip rail showing on the left side than it does the right. I've never done this before. Let's see what happens. <laughs> You can hear it there, I think. I can feel it. My propensity to squeak is going to be a lot higher with the reed uneven on my mouthpiece. I mean, there was a little squeak in there, and I fought off about three more. So I probably would not play like this. But, there, you know, interestingly enough, there is something in the sound that I kind of like. It's uh, a little bit less lined up, is what I want to say. But I don't. that's some stupid way that I think about it in my head. But... The overtones are a little bit, eh. the overtones are a little bit more complicated in some way that to me is interesting, but it also makes it uneven and it makes the, the places where it wants to squeak the most is going over the register break. So from the shallow mode to the clarion feels a little bit, eh, and, the, and the clarion to the altissimo feels eh, like garbage going from C to D. That's where it, this is likely to squeak. So... That's pretty much it. I mean, really, this is a short uh, suite, hopefully, and a very, very nuanced video. But I, I, I have been thinking about how much we talk about mouthpieces, how much we talk about barrels, how much we talk about how to work on reeds, ligatures, clarinets. But you know what's really important? How we get this stupid thing on the mouthpiece. So I just wanted to give some thoughts on that, that it's important that it's straight on the top. And for me, on the bottom, I get my ligature below the the vamp, the smiley face. I make sure it's straight, and I adjust how far up or down it is, but not by very much. So these are all things that are going to impact your sound to some degree, but mostly how it feels to play that read. And I figured, why not talk about this a little bit, since we spent a lot of time talking about, what's the right mouthpiece for me? Me too. But, you know, the mouthpiece that is most right for you has a read that has no chips, and is placed intentionally in a certain place and has been experimented going up or down just a little bit to see if that can make it a little bit better. Because whatever, whatever mouthpiece we have, the read's more important. And this part of Clarinet Plane rarely gets talked about, and I wanted to share my feelings. Thanks for listening. Woodwind Ninja is the website. I'll put it down in the description. Clarinet Ninja is our world here. And I'm going to put my video on how to work on reads right there. See you next time.